Hello, welcome back. I'm Swedish and I moved to Brazil over five years ago and in my channel I talk about my life here in Brazil and also have stopped working and live off my investments. And in today's video I want to talk about the 10 things that I found shocking when I moved here to Brazil. So let's begin. Okay, so the first thing that shocked me was how diverse the Brazilian population is. So Brazil has had immigration from loads of countries, so Portugal, Italy, Germany, uh, from Asia as well, in particular Japan, and lots from Africa as well. And the result is a population that is really mixed. Because before I visited Brazil, I had a stereotypical image of Brazilians as having dark hair, dark eye color, darker skin, on the shorter side. And there are many who look like that, but you've also got lots of tall, blonde, blue-eyed Brazilians, uh, lots of Brazilians with very fair skin, and lots of Brazilians who are black and Asian as well. And I think this diversity is really good, but it was something that I wasn't expecting. You can see this diversity in the celebrities as well in Brazil. So you've got the model Giselle Binchin, who's really tall, blonde, blue eyes. And then you have the Brazilian singer Anita, she's shorter, darker hair, darker eyes and skin. And then you have a famous Brazilian actress, mainly famous in Brazil, Marina Rai Barbosa. She's got fair skin, ginger hair. So you can see it's a real mix here in Brazil. And I live in the south of Brazil um, and there were lots of immigrants from Germany here in the south. And there are a couple of towns here in the south which look like German towns. So you can uh, walk around these towns with most of the population being tall and blonde and lots of people speaking German. So you can easily forget that you're in Brazil and think you're in Germany. Okay, so the second thing that I found shocking about Brazil was how beautiful Brazilian women are. Obviously everyone has their, their own tastes, but for me, I found Brazilian women very attractive. And like I said, the Brazilian population is really diverse. So you've got Brazilian women who are short, dark hair, dark eyes, darker skin, and then you've got tall, blonde, blue eyes, Brazilian women as well. So it's a real mix. But in general, for Brazilian women, appearance is very important. Say Brazilian women, they kind of dress up more, put on more makeup. They just, in general, put a lot of effort into their appearance. And I did a separate video about dating in Brazil, which I'll leave a link to. So if you want to know more about dating Brazilians, have a look at that video. But for me, I, I kind of fell in love with Brazilian women and in the end married a Brazilian. Okay, another shocking thing, which is connected to what I talked about previously, is the amount of plastic surgery that happens here in Brazil. So Brazil is one of the countries with the most plastic surgeries. So I found this list here, which says it's number two in the world below America. It's a bit outdated though, so maybe it's changed a bit, but a lot of plastic surgery happens here in Brazil. So just thinking about my friends and family that I have here in Brazil, and I would say that the majority of the women that I know have had some sort of plastic surgery. And that includes breast implants, liposuction, butt implants, and various other things. Um, and I think about friends and family that I have in Sweden, I can't think of anyone who's had plastic surgery. Maybe in Sweden they're a bit more secretive, I don't know, so maybe they have it but don't talk about it. But I would say definitely there's a lot of plastic surgery that happens in Brazil. So this all kind of goes back to the, the fact that I said earlier that Brazilian women, they are very focused on appearance. And so a, a lot of them do some plastic surgery. Okay, so another shocking thing that I found about Brazil was the amount of adultery that happens in Brazil. So a lot of Brazilians have affairs when they've got a girlfriend or they're married. And it's my impression that a lot more affairs happen in Brazil than they do in Sweden, for example. And I haven't done any research to scientifically conclude that that is the case. Just talking to family and friends here in Brazil, um, I would say I know probably four or five people who have had affairs and they've told me about it. Um, and then if I compare that to Sweden, I don't know anyone who's had an affair. But again, that could also be the fact that Swedish people are a bit more secretive and they have affairs but don't talk about it. But here in Brazil, especially the men, they just seem more open about it and actually talk about it. And I would, I would say that generally Brazilian men have more affairs than Brazilian women. 
But don't come to Brazil thinking that uh, all Brazilians cheat or anything. That's definitely not the case. But I think it's more common here. Okay, then sticking to the theme of relationship and affairs and stuff. The other shocking thing is, is Brazilian motels. Now, Brazilian motels aren't the same as the motels in America or Europe. You can find some cheap accommodation near the motorway. But in Brazilian motels, you don't stay there the whole night. You rent it for a couple of hours. And it's all focused on couples and, and making love. And a lot of these motels are themes. So you kind of go Italian Colosseum, Greek Palace. Um, and then inside these motels, they have different rooms. So some rooms have jacuzzis, bathtubs, uh, mirrors on the walls, on the ceiling. And, and couples go there and rent a room for a couple of hours. I know some other countries, I know South Korea also has motels like that. But it's a real shock for Swedish people who just comes here thinking it's a, a ch cheap hotel. Okay, so another thing that shocked me was that um, quite a small proportion of Brazilians speak English. So googling it, they say about 5% of the Brazilian population can speak English. I would say it's a bit higher than that, but you definitely need to speak Portuguese if you want to come to Brazil. I would probably say it's a bit better in the big cities there. More people know English, and I would say that kind of the younger population their English is better than the older population. But still, if you've got any intention of moving to Brazil, you need to learn Portuguese. Okay, so another thing that shocked me was how expensive certain things are here in Brazil. So I did a video about the cost of living here in Brazil, and I showed how the cost of living here in Brazil is a lot lower than it is in Europe and America. However, there are certain things that are a lot more expensive here in Brazil compared to Europe and America. And those are the things that are imported because the importation tax is very high here in Brazil. So basically the things that are made in Brazil, they can be the same price or even cheaper. But if you buy anything which is imported, it is generally a lot more expensive. So for example, if we just look at the iPhone 15, I know that now Apple is starting to assemble some of the phones in Brazil to try and reduce down the cost. But still, the, the iPhone is a lot more expensive in Brazil than it is in America. For example. So you can see here that the prices of uh, kind of the basic iPhone 15 is about 6,000 reais, which is about $1,200. And you can see here, on, I just chose Best Buy here, for example, you can get the, the iPhone 15 for between seven and $800. So it's definitely more expensive to buy these things in Brazil. And the same applies to laptops. They're a lot more expensive in Brazil compared to American Europe. But if you exclude these electronics and gadgets and stuff, the cost of living in general in Brazil is a lot lower. And I did a separate video on that and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Okay, so another thing that I was shocked about was the fact that 40 years ago, Brazil was a dictatorship, a military dictatorship. Now in Sweden, you don't study much uh, the history of South America. I kind of just knew that some of the countries had had some dictatorships there. But it was only when I started researching Brazil more that I realized that Brazil has only been a democracy for 40 years, more or less. So in 1964, there was a military coup. And so the current president of Brazil had to flee. His name was João Goulart. So he left Brazil and the military took over and they installed various dictators in Brazil and that lasted until 1985 when Brazil managed to do a relatively peaceful transition from the dictatorship back to a democracy. So for me as a Swedish person uh, living in a country which only 40 years ago was a dictatorship and I'm able to, to speak to people here who experienced it and, and they explain what it was like during that period there's definitely nothing I've experienced before because as a, as a Swedish person you only read about it in the books in school and that's it and also another shocking thing connected to politics is the fact that voting in Brazil is compulsory so nearly all Brazilians are required to vote um, so between the ages of 18 and 70 you're required to vote there are a few exceptions that if you're sick or you're away from home then you don't have to vote but basically when there's an election 
the majority of Brazilians vote because it's a requirement. And if you don't vote, then you have to pay a fine and you have problems getting a new passport if you need to renew your passport. So basically, if you don't vote, um, they complicate your life a bit and you might have to pay a fine. So I couldn't quite get my head around <laughs> the fact that it's a democracy, but you're forced to vote. But at least they have high voter turnout compared to America and Europe, where it's a lot lower. Another thing that shocked me was how big the carnival celebrations are. So carnival happens in February or March time. It kind of varies every year depending on when Easter is. And these celebrations are massive. I'm sure most of you have seen the carnival celebrations in Rio with those massive floats and all the dancers and everything. But that's only one part of the carnival celebrations. For most Brazilians, carnival means going to the beach and having loads of beach parties there. And these parties go on for days. I would say it's bigger than New Year celebrations because it's a New Year party, you know, only happens on the 31st. But the carnival parties, they go on for days. So carnival always starts on a Friday and then goes on for a Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday are holidays in Brazil, so people have a day off. And for a lot of people, Wednesday as well is a holiday. And so millions of Brazilians descend on the beaches, and the beaches become really busy during those times. And people put up gazebos on the beach, and bring loudspeakers and stuff, and, and it just gets really busy and crazy at the beach during this time. But I really like it. And you don't really have anything similar in Sweden, which goes on for such a long time. Oh, okay, so I hope you liked this video. If you've got any comments or you disagree with anything I said, or if you think I missed out on something that shocked you when you came to Brazil, please leave it in the comments. And also please like and subscribe. So thanks for watching, until next time.